Dustin Wankoff here, product specialist with Agland and Lloydminster. Today we're going to do our product support video for our model year 2020-1910 air cart. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go through our air cart navigation. Anything with an up arrow is an advanced setup. Under our meter setup in here, this is where we can select which tank, our product, and our color of roller. Our calibration. And variable rate if we have it enabled. One thing to note, if variable rate is enabled, you must have a checkbox in which of the following you'd like to use. If you are loading a prescription, you will then have it checked off for which tank you want that prescription loaded. Under our air cart setup, the size of our air tank, our remote height sensor or switch, variable rate on or off, tow between, dual fans and section equalizer. Under our tool, here we will have our tool type, that is a dual chute, our row spacing, and how many feet. Do note that if you are a 57 foot tool, you will add 57 here and 10 on, tow on T6 and B6. Under our sensor, we have our tire speed. This is very important to make sure that our air cart matches our tractor GPS speed. If our air cart speed and tractor GPS speed don't match up, that is where we will have inaccurate rates. If your air cart is going slower or faster than the tractor GPS, we can just go larger or smaller with this number. Next is our height switch, and here we can have it set up as a common or separate height switch. Once we get it set to the height that we want it to turn on and off, we will hit this rotational arrow and it will save that height. Our tank pressurization gauges here, it is a good idea to make sure that we calibrate zero regularly. When we do this, we need to make sure that our fans are off. Under our totals, one, two, three, this is where we have our field totals, our air cart totals, our lifetime acres and lifetime hours. And here, this is maybe a good option for you to have your field totals and your yearly totals here. It can be toggled on and off by selecting this and zeroing out by pressing, pressing the zero. It's also good to note that your acres in here are not the same as your section command acres. As the meter is turning, it is calculating the full width of that meter while we're seating. Meter totals. Under our calc, we can see here our flow, so our two tanks going to the bottom and our rear tank going to the top. How many acres till we run empty if they're right full? An area test and our, of course our meter verification. In our diagnostic settings, we hit system tests. Here we can make sure that our tank pressurization gauges are reading properly. We can test our top lamp and our bottom tank lamps. We can do our hydraulic maintenance in here. Section command diagnostics. We can hit all on. They'll all come back green if they command and then go all off. And last in here we can check our voltage to our air cart. If ever we have a uh, middle tank EPM low voltage, that means that your seven pin light connector isn't connected or that you've blown a work light fuse and this middle tank will be lit up red with no voltage. Now, to set up our implement profile in a 2630, go main menu, GS3, and equipment. And here, we want to make sure that our proper tractor is selected. 
the rear drawbar is a pivot drawbar, and the correct offsets are entered. Then, implement one for a tow between air cart will be grayed out air cart, give it a name, enter offsets in, and we do encourage you to each measure your own cart and tool. Implement two will then be your seater, give it a name, and enter the correct offsets for the tool. To set up our documentation in a 2630, once we have our proper product selected in our air cart, we can go main menu, GS3, document, and we will have three tabs up top. If we have any more than three tabs up top, we will need to select the fourth tab and hit delete operation. Here, product application, be a single product, Product type will be fertilizer, and then here you can select a predetermined one, enter new, or have them pre-populated from the operation center setup file. Same thing for product two. And last, for your seed type. Add a variety. You are now ready for documentation. Here is our relative flow blockage home run page. Here we can see each of our towers, top shoot and bottom shoot select them, and then see the secondary towers within. While we are seeding, we will see them lit up to the corresponding colors here for what is being seen. As we're seeding, we will see the bars change here as the flow across that tower changes and the black bar around each tower change in relationship to its neighbors. In our advanced settings, here we can change our sensitivity for our top shoot and bottom shoot. For example, for canola, we may want to change our sensitivity. Under advanced settings, here is where our meter on and meter off delay can be set. When a section is commanded off or a meter is turned off, this is the amount of seconds before blockage will start looking for a block. If you have any sensors that are giving you an issue and you wish to mute them, Touch them and they will then go to a checkerboard pattern. To turn them back on, touch them again. Next we're going to talk about setting up our section command. For those of you that haven't done it before, this is a multi-step process. First what we're going to do is set our fans to our desired speed that we'll be running in the field. Next, in our display, we're going to make sure that we have one tank enabled that our half width disconnects are open and our other ones are shut. We'll grab a stopwatch and this works best if you have two people. With everything running, you can grab a stopwatch, hit start at the same time you hit your hydraulic calibration switch and time how long it takes your product to get to your furthest outside runs. Then, once you have that time determined, you can reset the stopwatch, let go of the switch, and see how long it takes for you to run out of product to your shortest runs, which will be in your center. These are now your mechanical on and off times. It's best to do these three or four times and build an average as tenths of seconds do make a large difference. Now, for our section control on a 2630, we will go GS3 section. And in here, we will have our section control master, operation for each tank, Select our turn on and turn off times. You can enter those in. Now that we have our basic mechanical on and off times entered in our display, we want to perform a scratch test. First, in our overlap settings, we want to make sure that everything is set to 100% overlap. Then we will perform our scratch test. We want to drive down the field with the GPS line with our tool on the ground and make sure that we've painted a coverage map. Then 
we can lift up and we're going to want to cross our scratch pad test with our tool just out of the ground, but make sure we are applying product so we can see it above. As we are crossing our scratch pad, we're going to notice chevron patterns of our seed and fertilizer turning on and off. This is due to our center section shutting off first and our outer wings getting product last. As we're performing this test, we want to do it multiple times to make sure we're getting adequate coverage. If we notice on our turn off, if we have a miss in our center, we need to decrease our turn off time. As well, on this side, if we notice that we have misses on both sides of our wings, we're going to need to increase our turn on time. Now, while traveling this way as well, if we notice that we have a large overlap area here, we're going to want to increase our off time to bring our pattern out. And going this way as well, if we notice if there's a bunch of extra covered area here, we're going to want to decrease our turn on time to push our pattern further out. The whole goal while we're setting mechanical on and off times is to make sure that our turn off time is right at the line in our center sections and our turn on time is right at the line with our turn on time on our outer wings. Once we have that set, we can then use our overlap settings to get the desired overlap coverage we're looking for. Okay, now that we have our mechanical turn on and turn off times, we can set our overlap control. As we add feet of overlap, it is going to add extra coverage for us. On our turn off, by adding feet, we will see our cells move in, and our turn on time, we will see us move out here. For our overlap settings, you can come in here percent overlap and entered in our desired overlap. 1% equals roughly one foot of overlap. 